Hey everyone, it's Ryan here. So it's been a while since I've done a game review video. Uh, so this is a game called Visage. Uh, I don't have a physical copy, it was digital, it's on Games Pass. Uh, a really good friend of mine recommended that I play it. Uh, it's a psychological horror game. Um, now, normally for these games, I'm not too much of a fan of them because, like, not, I don't know, it, it's sort of like what horror films became for me for a bit. It was sort of like, it's just eerie place, not a lot of noise, and then some loud noise and the thing pops up on screen regardless of if it's scary or not. Um, and then Visage, basically when I looked at it, just looked like your, your typical uh, Silent Hills PT sort of wannabe game, where it's sort of like just the walking simulator, where it's like walk in this room, interact with this, oh you've triggered something. Um, but this one, like, I remember like when I finished it, I was sort of like, oh okay, that, like, that's the ending type thing. But uh, like looking a bit more into it, I watched this video, uh, basically that explains the story to it. And like looking into it, it's like it's actually really good. Um, so I don't like it, it's sort of weird to describe it because basically it's there's a few of these games where they are basically treat they it's a weird sort of experience for some people where it's like it's so not like it details it, but. God, I'm doing really terrible words, but basically, mental uh, mental health is basically a big topic in it. Um, it's like depression, um, like there's anxiety, there's paranoia, there's um, like dementia stuff like that. Basically, like stuff with like you know just basically like mental health stuff. And I think just because personally, I don't think I like. Because I'm not, I've not really looked into it if I do, I, um, but like I think I'm fine. But because I don't experience any of those mental health issues, I think that's why when I play some of these games, it doesn't sit that much with me, if you know what I mean. Because I can't relate to it. Um, but like, if I was doing it like based on that thought, then I, the game to me would have just been standard. But when you look into the story of it and like your character and then how all these other characters link into it, it actually makes it a really like interesting and like a really dark game. Um, so basically you play this guy called Dwayne Anderson who's basically moved into this house and basically uh, I think it's called the Visage Manor. I think that's why the game's called Visage. Um, and you find certain things in the house which basically tells you these different stories. Uh, you've got three people. You've got, I believe, Rabak is his name. Um, you, who's basically he's this guy who started developing paranoia, and basically, basically just like, yeah, we basically just think someone's watching him the whole time. And then you basically get these little like clips of stuff where it's basically um, him like, going, oh, I know someone's watching. I know the. the Eventually, like, he starts firing with something that he sees, and then basically his neighbour gets him sectioned, essentially, because obviously he's not well. And, um, yeah, I was speaking to my good friend, and she actually uh, sent me a message, which I'll reply to later. Um, and then, yeah, so then basically you end up, like, going through a hospital, uh, having to avoid these weird-looking patients with their eyes and mouths sewn, essentially, and they're just in their underwear. Um, Basically, you have to go through these floors, find certain things. Um, apparently, basically, he jumped out of a window and broke his legs. That's why he's on crutches. Uh, and then there's a bit where he finds you and he pushes you out the window, but then you're fine. And then, basically, basically it's like you got to go through these things, basically find out what's going to be going on through the story. Eventually, you get through it. Um, I can't remember what happens at the end of Rabak's one, if I'm honest, because it was, like, that long that I last played it. I forgot how it ended. I think you just escape, and then... You basically get this eyeball, which is really weird, because um, you have like this shrine room essentially, um, where basically all the pieces are put on there. Um, then you get Lucy's chapter. Basically, Lucy is this little girl that she basically talking through the TV. This demonic entity started talking to her, became friends with her, and then convinced her to kill her pet bird. Then the parents, basically, because of this. Um, got her to get medical treatment which was like a bunch of syringes then the mum wasn't happy with the fact it was syringes and like having that much of a dose in the kid eventually the kid through the demonic possession rips her own jaw off and kills herself and obviously the parents are distraught about it and then that's basically how that one ends so then you've got the bottom of her jaw as a little thing for the shrine room 
And then the last one is Dolores, who's this old lady who, of the three, she's definitely the most annoying. Um, like, she can be creepy at times. The one time that I jumped in my stream was because of her, and it was, like, I think it would have been a bigger jump if I was looking properly. There's a bit where you go in a room, and there's basically a bunch of mirrors, and you have to basically look in each one, and eventually she'll appear in one of them. And then, like, she'll be doing different things. And there's one where you look at her, and it disappears after, like, 15 seconds. I'm thinking, oh, maybe she's new to a different mirror. So I've gone around to look for a different mirror, and then you hear a scream, and basically she flew out this other mirror that she was in. But because I thought she was in another mirror, I missed it. So, but just the like the noise alone got me, which is why like to me like when it comes to, like horror movies and stuff is literally it could be anything as so long as you've got that silence followed by Wah! and then like that's literally all you need to make someone jump. Like it's just that high like either like violin noise or like the piano or whatever. Um, like basically that's all you need. Then just something popping up on the screen, um, and then you basically got break all these mirrors that she has, but she keeps appearing in like different places in the house. So like she'll appear behind the car in the garage. She'll appear in like the bathroom, in doorways of places that you need to go to, so you need to find another way around. Um, and basically, as you do each one, you kind of figure out what's going on with her story. So basically, she's the one that's got uh, basically like paranoia, dementia, uh, anxiety, She ba and basically all this other stuff. Her husband, George, doesn't understand it. And then at points she starts becoming delusional and thinks that George is trying to poison her to the point that she ends up stabbing him with seven knives because you find a mirror, like a room in a mirror where basically there's George's body with seven knives in it. Um, and as you go through you find certain things and there's like she, there's, fine, there's one where she sat at the table and she asks you for a special tea so you go get it and it turns out it's the poison tea and she's like I knew you were trying to poison me and she basically throws you in the oven and you break out. Um, and then, yeah, you basically, as you're going around, you find these little toys for the baby carriage. Um, and that's the thing, like, she'd start thinking she was hearing a baby, and I believe, like, obviously the baby's long gone, I think, by that point. So then George is trying to convince us, like, there's no baby, and she's like, no, I can hear it, blah, 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 and all this stuff. Um, and, yeah, like I said, eventually Dolores kills her husband George, and then through the guilt she hangs herself, and then you get, um, oh, what does it you get? You get, you get something from her as the memento to put on the thing um, and then uh, the last one is you get you find some videotapes around the house like nothing says haunt you which is good so basically you can look around the house find these videotapes you watch them all and then um, basically with each one it triggers something in the house that you've got to go find these like this black goo basically appears on the wall um, that basically there's one for addiction where you go down a ladder that's now in the parents' bedroom, um, and then you uh, basically sit down on this chair. There's a TV with this masked man on it, going, "Oh, you come down for another drink, have you?" And there's like whiskey, and basically he keeps convincing you to drink. All these patients show up nearby, and like, "Oh, you see them over there, don't you?" You know, if you take another drink, it will go away. And basically, it's, basically, it's your mind telling you to basically drink your problems away. You go through that, you get a mask piece, and basically, you have to do like seven different challenges to get these mask pieces. Um, all to do with what the video takes was. So there's like, I think, addiction, affliction, pride, prison, indifference, uh, and then there's like two other ones which I cannot remember right now. Uh, I think greed was one, and then there was another one. Um, I think it was like in defiance or something like that. It's very, it was very similar to indifference. Um, and yeah, basically with each one, it basically tells you the story of Dwayne, who you're playing as. Um, so there's one where it's like, uh, like I said, the drinking thing. There's one where he goes to the shop and buys a bunch of booze. And basically the PA's going, go on, Dwayne, get yourself another. Just have another one and another one and another one. And basically you're sat in front of the TV just drinking away whilst your wife is basically going, you're not caring for our child and all this stuff. Um, and basically like you go through all these other ones. Um, and then, yeah, basically, basically it's sort of real. It's like, oh, Dwayne's an alcoholic and... Uh, He's basically guilting himself, thinking his wife doesn't love him and blah, 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 and all this stuff. Um, like, I'll get to the big reveal at the end, and then I'll explain it a bit more there. But essentially, you go through all the seven endings, you find the seven mass pieces, and then you go through the basement door, like, uh, and then uh, the good ending, which I got, is basically, spoiler alert, by the way, um, you uh, are reunited with your wife and kid, I guess. 
Um, cause ba like, cause basically they leave you essentially, I think, or they die. But essentially, like, just based on that, I was, I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Like, it's a weird mental journey type thing. And it was sort of like, I think just because I don't relate to that stuff, which is why I was sort of like, uh, it's okay, I guess. But then when you read into the story of it, there's like a tiny little detail. Like, this is normally why I love when people do these with videos, for like games and stuff, is they'll look into like all the documents you find. Basically, there was this thing called MK Ultra, which was essentially, I think this was during the Cold War, they would basically test people on the LSD and basically see how they react to certain stuff. Because um, basically they wanted to make, I guess, weird, like, humanized weapons or something. Um, and essentially, Dwayne was a part of this, is basically what it's revealed. And all these people that are in this house, they're all from different times, and Dwayne is essentially responsible for their murders. Because he's basically injected them with LSD. For example, the kid being given the syringes was LSD. Uh, Rabak in the hospital, um, like, he's the only one that names you, like, basically he's the one that's aware of you, and, like, the whole him being paranoid that people are watching, you were actually watching him, like, it's literally, there are cameras and stuff that were watching him, um, and then when he just gets sectioned, he breaks his leg trying to escape, they bring him back in, and then essentially they lock him in a room and leave him to die, um, basically because he knows too much, essentially. Um, and then with Dolores, that is basically um, because of the water supply, I believe. Same with uh, Rabak as well, because of the water supply, she's basically been through God knows how many years of LSD, which is why her mental illness starts to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, so essentially, it's sort of revealed that Dwayne is responsible for him, because there's one of the places you find where you're being confronted by your wife in a mask, and she's like... Um, Want me to stab you in the chest seven times? Want me to hang you from a noose? Want me to throw you out a window and break your legs? Want me to rip your jaw off? Basically, like, being oddly specific about these deaths that you've seen before. Um, and then you can find, like, a little... Uh, like, in one of the hospital rooms, there's basically a thing with your name on it, and then on the chart is this the scientific, like, the elements. Um, like, the molecules, if you know what I mean. Uh, basically, that symbol, but for LSD, essentially. Um, and there's one way you go through a sort of war, uh, factory, um, and it, apparently it's revealed that Dwayne was basically told to uh, supply, like basically put LSD in the water supply, um, and then um, it's sort of revealed that like you're going, you're basically being chased by like, this black goo creature, and well, black I say it's a creature, basically it's, it's a humanoid, a human made out of black goo essentially. Um, there's this guy, he's called Lewis something, I forgot what his surname is, like Lewis Trapham or something like that. Um, essentially, like, he's the only one you don't play as, but you find his identity card, like his key card. Um, and it's basically sort of like, they saw, in the video they explain that the black goo creature is essentially Lewis. And the reason why he's the one that's haunting Dwayne is because when Dwayne was told to Supply, basically put LSD in the water supply, Lewis caught him in the act, so then Dwayne had him killed, essentially. Which is basically why this one in particular haunts Dwayne. Um, and then that basically explains why all the other ghosts are essentially after Dwayne as well, because basically it's sort of revealed that he's possibly dead as well, and in purgatory, which is why uh, basically all the paranormal stuff happens. Um, and then... Yeah, so then there's a bit with a well when you see all the dead bodies, it's basically because they've poisoned the water supply and everyone's died from drinking from the water supply. Um, and yeah, basically as you go on, it's sort of like it just shows basically Dwayne's guilt and all this other stuff and his past and everything. And then like I said, you get the good ending where he reunites with his wife and kid, which is sort of like, if you go into that story, I'm sort of like, how does he atone for it all? Like, I think I just missed that part. But... Yeah, uh, basically, it's sort of like a, I guess, a final review that I'm going to go with. Um, if I just went on the base game, I would have given it like a 3 out of 10. Like, to me, it would have just been like your average horror film, horror game that I've seen, like, I've seen plenty of them before. Like, small corridors, flickering lights, oh, this is thing spooking you, but, uh, you know, type thing. Um, but looking into the story, 
and looking back on it and going, oh, that's why that's like that, and that's why like that. I will pretty much budge it up to like a seven out of ten. Like I like, I definitely ha had a bit of fun with it. I think like to be honest, I was getting more annoyed of like trying like of getting lost and trying to find where I was trying to go. There's one where it's like you needed a lighter to get there, but I couldn't find a lighter anywhere. Um, and I spent a good 45 minutes trying to do that. So that basically like stuff like that I was getting annoyed with. But then I, I found the lighter in a separate puzzle. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, I think it's a really good horror game. I've heard really good things about it like since playing it. Um, and yeah, I've got, I've got to recommend my good friend Laura for uh, recommending it to me. Uh, she has recommended that I go through Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. I've only played a couple of hours of it. I know it's an old game because obviously Village has been out since, but she's recommended that I stream that at some point. So that'll be on the cards. I'm also going to stream Driver San Francisco within the next couple of days uh, because I wanted to stream that a while back and basically my Wi-Fi kept playing up so I just never got around to it. But that's been my review for Visage. Basically it's just like a personal review, basically just playing through this, the game, what I thought of the story. Um, yeah, like I said, at first, it, to me, it just felt like your substandard horror game that basically has been one of many. Um, but looking into the story and how it all plays out and everything, I've obviously got to put the mark a bit higher. Um, I think, like I said, I think if I had maybe, a, like, if I had more of an understanding of mental illness, um, of, like, what people go through with it, then maybe I would relate to it a bit more. But I think just because I don't personally... I think that's sort of why some of the things in there are sort of like, okay, it's just your substandard, like, oh, he's here, now he's not. Oh, now I've turned around and it's only this. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it's a really good game. I'd recommend you play it if you can. If like if, if you're fine with horror games, I'd recommend you play it. Uh, it is on Xbox Games Pass. I don't know the PlayStation side, if it's on there. But, uh, yeah, that's been my review for Visage. Uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, I might do a review for Driver San Francisco once I've played through that. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching this, and I'll see you in the next one.